Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for high-level traders to learn valuable trends and strategies, connect with other top traders, and become consistently profitable. Click the link in the description of this video to receive a special offer on our revolutionary PS60 training, access to our daily chat room filled with experienced traders, and so much more. Space is limited, so make sure you don't miss out. We look forward to seeing you in the room. Hey guys, good morning everybody and welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com nightly wrap-up show, actually weekend wrap-up show. Hope everybody uh, is doing uh, great. Uh, again, bear market, we kind of know this, but it, again, when you look at life from a point of, you know, just living life, like le yesterday was one of my more prouder moments just as a parent and I, I never, I've always said this, you know, happiness as much as everybody talks about you want to have the money and you want to have the stability and you want to have the foundation but there's so many little moments in life that are made to you know to really grasp to, to you know to really enjoy and embrace and i don't think i've ever been really realized what happiness was until i had my children around you know 11 and a half years ago when my son was born and yes it was one of my most um i i would say happiest moments I, i've seen what my son uh, started doing Taekwondo for all you guys who've been following me for a long time. You kind of know how knee deep <laughs> as a family we are in in the sport. But um, it, it, he started three years old, and yesterday he's eleven and a half now, and he finally got his black belt. And this is eight years in the making. And as much as we enjoy the idea of you know having success, and you know it all starts out with little memories and. For me, just for me speaking personally, uh, I don't care what the market does. Okay, I've been doing this nearly now 20 years. It could go up, it could go down. The most important part for me is my children, is my wife, is my family, is my happiness. And the market should never define your happiness. It should never define your self worth. It should never define anything. Just remember, the stock market is there, and it's going to be there. Okay, it was there a long time ago before a lot of us were born, and it's going to be around a long time. Um, after a, long, a lot of us have been gone. And the market is not very creative. And this is kind of where we want to kind of start the morning uh, with. And, you know, again, if you've been following me on YouTube, especially on the YouTube channel, uh, not even on Twitter, but the YouTube channel on these weekly kind of videos, you know how everything is broken down into steps, okay? There's no such thing as leaps and bounds. Everything is baby steps. You cannot ever put the cart in front of the horse. And the one thing that I keep on saying over and over again, especially to new traders, who are just starting out with the idea of technical analysis, the one piece of advice I will always give to a new trader is just understand one thing. The market is not trying to trick you. Okay, I, I'm, I'm telling you this as the day is long. The market is there strictly to take your money. The worst enemy you have is yourself. Your eyeballs, okay, are the leading indicator. Okay, I don't care about pitchforks, MACDs, VWAPs, Fibonacci's, whatever you're trading, okay, your eyeballs are the most important technical data collection services on the planet. And when you look at what the market do has, has done ever since we started talking about this double top here about two and a half months ago, you can see that everything is playing out visually, okay? Forget about technically, forget about macro, everything is playing out visually from the time that we held the bottom levels to trade it to supply levels held the bottom levels, traded the supply levels, and I started doing kind of like a, a one to two minute midday update. I don't do it every day on Twitter, but I do it like one or, you know, one or two minutes. It's not really a lot, of, uh, a lot of content, but I try to share my thoughts, you know, basic thoughts within that one or two minute cycle on what the market is, go is probably going to do next based on technical analysis that we're seeing. And if you look at the simplicity of basic, basic technical analysis, now that it's played out, right? Now that it's played out, again, we've been talking about what potentially could happen now. So it shouldn't be, especially for you guys who are following me on stock tweets or uh, YouTube, especially YouTube, Twitter on a daily basis, you kind of see my thought process. So when this is playing out, I'm not shocked because what we're doing is collecting data and positioning ourselves in the process. So when we talked about how important it was that the queues failed to reclaim the 173 level, this was a big deal. When we talked about in the you know, one or two minute video that I recorded the following day, how it's important for the market, for the NASDAQ 100 proxy, the QQQs, to hold that five, you know, that five day moving average, right? That was important. You can see how big the market moved down. 
you know, maybe, you know, 15, 20 minutes after this video. And again, I have nothing to do with that move. There's no, there's no credit being taken. It's just basic technical analysis of what potentially could happen next and having it play out. So Friday, you know, Thursday into Friday session was really a very, very important cog in, in what we're going to see happen next. So Friday, we had this really aggressive decline. If you guys remember, uh, first of all, we had that 800 point decline on, it was on Thursday, right? No, excuse me. It was on Tuesday. Okay. So Wednesday we had off because of, um, the observation of George Bush's, uh, funeral, right? So when the market opened up the next day, okay, the Dow went down like, I think it was also down just pretty, pretty heavy amounting five, six, 700 points, whatever it was. And the one thing that the bulls did going into Friday's session, we'll talk about that in a second. They really could have bought themselves some time. And here's what I'm talking about. So if you look at, if you look at the session from thir from Thursday, right? So we had a 700 point rally pretty much off the bottom in the NASDAQ composite at some point, I think went green. Okay. And the Dow went from down 700 points to being down 70 points. And the next day, all I kept on saying was the next day, how, unless the market comes out with some really aggressive macro news, we should get a follow through. Okay. We should really get a follow through. The key is to reclaim the previous day's highs. Okay. Which was right over here, the previous day's highs and build off those highs. So, Naturally, what does the market do after a 700 point intraday decline? Naturally, it opens up down, futures open up down like 130, 140 points on the Dow. The problem with the bear case on that situation on that opening was if you looked at the beta names, and again, my, my universe is literally 10 stocks. Again, for all you guys who've been following me a long time, uh, I just trade these pretty much same stocks in day in, day out. Not every 10 of them, but uh, you kind of get my point. And the one thing that I saw pre market. Netflix was down like a dollar fifty. Amazon was down like four. Tesla was up. Um, Nvidia was down like eighty cents. So you knew right there, and I even tweeted that out. You knew right there that listen, if the Dow's down one hundred thirty, one hundred forty points pre market, and Amazon's only down three, four points. You know it's coming, right? You know it's coming. And the and what happened was instantly the market opens up. Sellers got trapped, or even shorters, early shorts of the day got trapped at the bottom channel, and we started spiking up, right? We started spiking up, and this is the level that I said the bulls needed to reclaim. Okay, we talked about it on the nightly video the previous the previous night. I even tweeted about it. They had to reclaim the 167 level and build. And this is where the bulls really, really dropped the ball. Amazon explodes, goes up like 15 points or so. Tesla has a run. Netflix has a run. We'll talk. We'll show you guys the pivots uh, that we put in uh, into the into the channel. So they had their runs, right? Tesla had a nice move. Netflix had a nice move. Amazon explodes. Blah blah. Red to green. All that good stuff. So everything is good. The problem was what we talked about from the technical point of view. The Qs could not, absolutely not, reclaim that 167 level. They traded there for like a minute or so. And then next thing you know, they completely crapped out. And again, when we talk about supply, this is supply, right? This is supply. And next thing you know, the market just absolutely imploded. And again, if you go back to the most pure basic points of technical analysis, just using your eyeballs, right, guys? We talked about rally off the bottom, hit supply, faded. Rally off the bottom, hit supply, faded. Rally off the bottom, hit supply. And right here, if you guys remember, to be determined... Well, it's not predetermined. It's not to be determined anymore. We sold, right? We sold. And the question is now, are we going to retest these levels here? Again, use your eyeballs. Okay. Forget about RSIs and MACDs and Fibonacci and the PS60 theory and forget about everything else. Use your eyeballs. Okay. Use your eyeballs. If you had, again, and again, you could take, you could turn to a three-year-old literally and say, well, where do you think the next one of these pretty little candles is going to go? Chances than not, just using their eyeballs, they're going to probably say it's going to go lower, right? And the most basic thing we could do is trust, right? Is trust. If we can't trust our own eyeballs. Well, what's the point? You know, what's the point of doing the whole thing? So the bias has to be to the downside. And the fact that if you look at the 60 minute channels, the, the really, really aggressive nature. And again, if you go through every single stock, I mean, there was no, I mean, there were no buyers in sight from the time 
that Amazon gapped up and traded to this like 720, 1720 level and obviously couldn't confirm. I mean, look at the sell-off. I mean, you're talking about a hundred point sell-off within several hours, like nothing. I mean, Netflix, I mean, there wasn't, I don't think there was an uptick. Okay, I literally don't think it was an uptick. NVIDIA, there wasn't even an uptick. So very, very aggressive sellers. And the question on Friday, uh, especially in the afternoon is, who is possibly going to be long over the weekend, okay? Or even better, who's gonna be there on Monday defending prices? Because remember, if you've been following me a long time, you kind of know the idea of buy the dip, right? Right, buy the dip theory only exists in a bull market. And that's a fact, it's, it's not a theory. It's not room for interpretation. The idea of buy the dip is a bull market slang, okay? It's a bull market slang that aggressive, Perma bulls, they make fun of bears. But again, if you look at how the market structures, keep in mind, if, you, if you're a professional trader, you know the bear's been winning. Just as much as the bull's been winning, the bear's been winning. And it didn't start out in the last two months off the double top. There's so many opportunities, especially on very, very specific names in groups that have been really sell biased for a long time. Look at the financials, right? Just look at the financials. Look at the periods within the year, okay? Just look at the periods within the year, how weak beta has been within those times. And you could have done incredibly well just picking and choosing members of the tribe to selectively sell or short based on technical confirmations of channels. So the perma bull that quote unquote bears never learn, well, again, you're pretty much showing the world how insignificant your idea of trading is and how novice of a trader you really are. If you ask any professional traders, both sides of the ledger have been doing very, very well. So going into next week, again, it's going to be very, very hard to convince the retail investor that, hey, by the way, it's all good. Buy the dip. The Santa Claus rally is there. Buy the dip. The January effect will spill over the first quarter. Buy the dip. And when you look at uh, the indexes, just the indexes, they, they really paint a really ugly picture, nearly 5% losses uh, all across the board, and, and, and nearly 5% losses, just a tad under on all the major indexes. And the question is, okay, are we going to retest these lows, especially on the QQQs? Are we going to test these lows? And look at the spread, right? Look at the absolute spread here from the 61 level that we are right now, all the way down to the 57 level and the lows from November the 20th of 157.13. So there's room, there's room, there is a spread. And I, I think that the major problem, uh, especially with a lot of retail investors, and again, some of you guys, unfortunately, like I say all the time, the only exposure to trading you have is on social media. Okay, I mean, unfortunately, again, the days of people sitting on a trading desk with 20, 30 other guys, you know, developing relationships, developing uh, the habits, whether they're good or bad, we don't know. That personal touch is over. Okay, there's there's not a lot of major desks left, especially in the prop industry, um, that will let you play or let you test the limits that used to be, you know, 10, 15 years ago. So your only exposure on social media, and the only thing you are seeing on social media is, well, cash is a position, sit on hands. Yeah, it all sounds fine and dandy if you don't if you don't trade full time. Okay, if you have another business, then yeah, you can pick and choose, and that's great. But if you're a professional trader and this is your only source of income, I'd like you to, to you know explain to Bank of America that it's a bear market that you have to sit on your hands. You can't write out a mortgage. <coughs> it's gonna be very very tough. Um, so it's very very important, guys, to really understand. God gave you two eyes, two ears, okay? Um, it's very, very important to understand that you can trade both sides of the market. I apologize, I have something stuck in my throat. I've been fighting an illness for like two, three days. Uh, if you look at a Friday session, and please be, bear with me with me. So these are the pivots uh, we put into, well, you're looking right now at our private uh, stock tweets feed, feed. These are all the pivots, guys. Like, like I say every single week, we don't pick and choose. You know, we don't pick and choose to show people. These are the pivots, okay? These are the pivots, whether they confirm or not confirm is a whole different story. But I, again, the idea of having a process in any single market is the most important thing. So if you look at Friday's session, and again, you kind of scroll down here, you know, here's kind of from the night before we talked about, it. I've just been fighting an illness. If you look at from the night before, these were the pivots. These are the two really, really exploded. You had Boeing uh, taking off, you had Boeing 
uh, taking off from that 334 level, put up like a $3 candle. Uh, you saw what Tesla did. Uh, forget about the 74 and a halves. Tesla just went nuts. Tesla went completely nuts. Uh, put up a, like a 7, 8 candle. This was the most important part. Again, this is where technical analysis played the role. You had 167 build important. Again, they never built. They never built. And that was the most important part from the bullish case that they couldn't reclaim. Uh, Roku, I believe, gave like a 20, 30 cent move. Again, when the market pulled, everything pulled right with it. Uh, uh, AVGO, it never, uh, it never re not even came close to even touching that level. And Amazon, this is a pre-market high of 1720s. Um, obviously, never, never uh, confirmed as well. Not even came close. And obviously, this is where you see Tesla rocket, Boeing rocket. Uh, and there's, and here, I think that was the, the end of it off the Twitter feed. And then later in the day, uh, here's where, again, where technical analysis comes in. Uh, 167.77 yesterday's low. Any close below that, it's a waterfall effect all the way down to the 140 level. Again, you saw what the cues in. Again, I apologize uh, for my throat. They went down like 40, 50 handles, uh, 40, 50 cents. Um, and I think that was it. I think we were also looking for a setup above Tesla that never really confirmed. And that is it. So what I made for uh, what I made for tomorrow, and I want to share it with all you guys. These are all levels, okay? Uh, these are all levels that if they confirm for this week, okay? Uh, you see the Qs, the spies, Netflix, <clears throat> Amazon, Google, Nvidia, Apple, Boeing, and Alibaba. Especially for the option players, okay? If they start building below those levels, what I did was right next to them put a potential measured move. Now, these would be the lower ends of these channels. Now, if they start confirming these levels to the left, there's a very, very good chance based on technical analysis that we just talked about, we'll probably test these levels as well. Okay, very, very important to understand. The one thing about technical analysis and what's great about the pivots, right, the PS60 process is nobody needs to be in these trades with you. And I, I've said this time and time again, unfortunately, again, getting back to the whole social media thing, there's so many quote unquote alert services. And again, your only exposure is to quote unquote alerts, small caps, this, that, the other thing. And you need a thousand people to push a stock up a dime, right? It's reality. Okay. You can tell me, no, you can tell me it's reality. We all know that's what it is. The greatest thing about trading technical analysis and trading real stocks Nobody needs to be in the stock with you, okay? You don't need to rely on anybody. You don't need to wait for anybody to give you the green light. All you need to do is trust confirmation, stay patient. And because, again, there's only for us six candles in the day, that gets rid of your emotional commitment. That gets rid of your case of FOMO, right? Fear of missing out. We know the top of the channel. We know the bottom of the channel. We know the mid-tier channel, which we call the sneaky pivots. And all we need these things to... Confirm. So perfect example, like I logged off, uh, I logged off uh, on Friday around two o'clock. Again, I was just, I, I was just fighting some sort of bug for like the whole week. I mean, I was really in bad shape. Uh, as you can hear by my voice, I'm choking. I'm not in, in greater shape now. I'm, at least I'm getting better. But I was sick. I mean, I'm still, you know, I'm, I'm still under the weather. And here's a perfect example that I tweeted out. I, I didn't even take this trade. Right, I have, no, I have nothing to do with this trade. I know I got a lot of feedback after. Hey, great call. Okay, it's not about the call. It's about you trading the stock, and that's the whole point. Unfortunately, that social media, a lot of new trades on social media. Again, it's not about being called. It's not about being right. It's about you adopting a process, and I don't care if it's my process, your process, whatever the case may be. It's just trusting the process, waiting patiently for confirmation, and clicking the mouse. With extreme prejudice. And again, perfect example. I had nothing to do with this trade. I wasn't involved with this trade. 1652 line in the sand. Here it is, right? It stopped right at the linear regression line. Any build below that, right? The stock collapsed. Look at and again, look at Amazon. Again, it had nothing to do with me. Okay. It doesn't make a difference. Again, right? Here it is. It doesn't make a difference. Who's in the trade with you, right? You, me, the Pope, your friend, right? It doesn't make a difference, right? It's either gonna go or it's not gonna go. And you know, you're talking about a $30 candle. Again, for all you guys who got it, congratulations. So going into this week, I'm going to cut this a little bit short because, again, I'm just, it's hard for me to talk. Uh, going into this week, depending how the market opens up, if we open up green, then that's a perfect world because I'm, I'm flat over the weekend. I don't have a single position. If we open up green, uh, then, yes, everything's on watch green to red, right? Any, any of your favorite stocks is on watch green to red. And for all you option players, and again, I put this into uh, the channel, and I even tweeted this out. For all you guys who follow me on Twitter, um, I put the levels in on my Twitter account. Um, where am I? Where am I? Where am I? Uh, 
Uh, I put the levels here. They are. I put the levels in my on my Twitter account so you guys can use this. Um, you know, kind of play. You know, kind of make your make your plan for uh, this week. But these are the levels. Okay. So if we open up green and we start confirming Friday's lows, okay, uh, we should go. Uh, we should go lower. If we gap down, okay, obviously we're going to watch for uh, opening range lows as well. Again, guys, it's only scary if you don't have a process, okay? Am I right every single trade? Of course not. If I'm right every single day, of course not. But again, I understand what's in front of me. I understand how to tear up, tear down based on market conditions. But there's a lot of really, really good opportunities most days. And all you need to do is just wait for it. So guys, I appreciate the love, appreciate the feedback. Uh, it's phenomenal when good traders, good people come together with one common goal, okay? And all we're trying to do is get better. Like I say this all the time, even though I'm doing this <clears throat> nearly 20 years, I'm as flawed as everybody, okay? I'm as flawed as any other trader. The only difference what is, um, it's easier for me to hide my flaws because I'm almost 20 years in. That's screen time that I, the difference between a guy who's been trading for 20 weeks and a guy like me who's been trading nearly 20 years, I know how to overcome my flaws. It's easier for me to omit. So it's much easier for me to forget and move forward than somebody who's been trading for a very limited time. But all of us guys, okay, anybody who's been trading for 20 minutes, 20 weeks, or 20 years will tell you we are all still a work in progress. So don't, you know, that's why guys, don't ever be upset that you're not progressing as fast as your next, you know, next door trader, your next door, whatever the case may be. Everybody's progressive nature, it comes at a different interval, okay? Some guys get it after two weeks. Some guys get it after two years. Some guys never get it, okay? And that's just the reality. I don't care what process, you know, you're trading. Some guys will just will never get it. And that's, and that's part, unfortunately, of the reality, okay? I don't sell fantasy. I sell reality. But... When it clicks, and again, I don't care what process you trade, when it clicks, it really does click incredibly hard. Guys, God bless everybody. I love you all. And with God's help, I'll see you all in the field tomorrow. Take care, guys. Have a great, great weekend.